Hello everybody. I'm going to do a review on this McCullough steam cleaner which was actually picked up from Harbor Freight. Uh, they sell these at like Walmart, Home Depot, Target, uh, places like that and they're oh, averaging probably about $120 for the unit. This is actually listed at $129.99 at Harbor Freight but of course I used a 20% off coupon which saved me $26 so I got this for $103.99 plus tax in lieu of you know $119, $120 plus tax so my out the door price on this was $112.85 uh, the reason I bought one of these is this is a you know like a pressurized steam cleaner this is not a commercial unit this is a, like what you would use in a home or something like that so I'm not too familiar about its operation yet and how well it works but we're going to find out uh, I've read some reviews online and these things were uh, oh about 50 percent up the middle and most of the time when you li listen to reviews or whatnot that's usually what you get about half people satisfied half not and the other ones are in the middle so you know some of the complaints that they were having was uh, like this handle breaking off or uh, the buttons breaking off where you apply push it to get the steam out or the uh, tips because it's so hot up here you know wearing the tips out in the brushes and whatnot I don't have an opinion on that yet but I'm I probably will in some point in time but what I can say is as you can see this is black and yellow and all the ones I see online including Harbor Freight uh, they're uh, yellow and gray and these buttons instead of being gray up here they're red on the other units so I thought well is this an older unit or is this a newer unit and I looked at uh, the uh, the M here from McCullough and looked at their actual website and that's the one they have on there so this is their new logo if you look online this won't look the same it'll be a different M so my guess is this is the same model number but this is either just a recolored unit uh, or maybe they fix some stuff so that's just something to be aware of uh, but you know this is supposed to with a full uh, water container in it it's supposed to do 45 minutes of continuous steam is what they say well that is not in my opinion 45 minutes with continuous steam on the trigger until it's empty that's 45 minutes of continuous trigger time total uh, so you know I think when you're using this you're gonna have to stop and let it heat back up uh, I don't know if the larger units do that or if you can just keep going with it but this is what I've got so that's just another complaint that I had I'll know more about that in the future uh, anyway the wand itself has attachments for it uh, if you have one of these it may be a red button you just push this and you can pull this off I'll show the rest of the attachments here momentarily the clip on there you can take this particular brush off Put it back on there's some other attachments with it that I'll show uh, here's the button you press to let the pressurized steam out uh, let's say if you're doing a floor or something you want it constantly on you can press it and lift this up now the trigger is held open you don't have to hold it with your thumb press and release and there we go uh, there's actually about nine foot of hose to the end of this tip you know that's quite a long reach and it probably has about 15 10 to 15 foot of cord on it I haven't unwound it yet but it looks fairly long this also doubles as a carrying handle here I did have to put this on but to my surprise it even came with a screwdriver to do that I thought that was kind of interesting that's the only thing you have to do for assembly uh, under this lid right here they're calling it a storage compartment but yeah it's you just got a little bit of space around this cap right here this is where you actually fill it you would take the cap off and measure out a certain amount of water and put in there and then tighten it back up now in terms of the water you probably to keep the mineral deposits down anything that does like steaming or you know something like that you'd really need to use like a distilled water or a demineralized water but you're not supposed to store it with water in them anyway so you always kind of want to empty it out but 
according to their chart here there's approximately 15 minutes worth of water time or steam time with 16 ounces of water uh, double that 32 ounces of water for 30 minutes and then triple 16 for 48 ounces for approximately 45 minutes of steam time it did come with a little funnel to put down in the hole to fill it up with water as well as a plastic measuring beaker here which does go up to 16 ounces so if you wanted to fill this up all the way three of these to the 16th 16 ounce line pour them in that should give you about 45 minutes worth of cleaning time so that's what I know about that right there uh, there is a switch on the back underneath kind of a rubber cover turn it on turn it off uh, this is supposed to, there's a light right here that's supposed to uh, tell you when it's ready. I believe it lights up when it's ready to go, or it shuts off when it's ready to go. It's one of those two, I just don't know yet. It does not have a space for cord storage. It really is lacking in storage for the accessories. And there's quite a few of them here actually, so you'll probably need to get a, a tote bin or put them in a sack or something if you're interested in getting one of these. It is on wheels. It has two casters in the front, two large rollers on the back. Seems to move around okay, like if you were going through your house or something like that. Uh, but I'm going to uh, set up and show you the accessories that came with it, and we'll move on with this review from there. Okay, well I'm going to go through the accessories that this steamer came with. And like I said, there's been complaints on some of them about them just falling apart because of the heat. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work, but we'll find out. Alright, well I'm just going to start going through these and, you know, maybe what you can use them for, but, and then I'll get them out of the way. Uh, this one right here is actually a squeegee. There's a rubber squeegee here and here. I guess you can use this for cleaning off mirrors, <clears throat> maybe shower doors or something like that. And there's a series of holes across here that, I guess, that manifolds out and will jet out the steam. Uh, and again, you can use that directly on the end of the wand, or you can put on one of these extensions, or two extensions. It's pretty versatile as far as reach. So that's all I can say about that one. You know, it's a heavy ABS construction. Uh, the rubber, you know, it is what it is. So I guess I'll go into these extension wands. It came with two of these wands. Uh, they're probably, I don't know, maybe. 20 inches, 24 inches each, and you can put a, a floor piece on it, or if you wanted to put the high pressure nozzle on it up here, get up to something, or put this triangular shaped brush on it. Again, they seem to do what they're supposed to do. Push the button, they're back apart. This is a looks like a scotch bright pad it's a scouring pad here this is one of the big complaints this thing's supposed to just disintegrate in a short amount of time when you're using it uh, not sure on that but it simply just goes on the end of here and there you go scrubba scrubba and it came with a series of brushes here four of these are nylon I'm sorry five of these are nylon there are two that are a little longer and then three that are all the same length but they're shorter it came with a brass brush what I really think these are bronze I don't believe they're brass uh, to where you could maybe clean off the grill of your smoker or something like that and in these there is a key and there's a slot right here I don't know why unless it just to keep it from twisting but you have to get it in the right orientation and then it'll go on there and you can do your work with it so these are some of the items too. I hear these brushes melt down or something like that. Don't really have an opinion on that, but it did come with those. These are about the only items you can actually put in that storage compartment that they claim that's there around where you fill it up with water. That's about all that fits in there. <clears throat> this one, of course, you can use it without it to get down in a crack or something like that. High pressure, maybe grout on your tile. Uh, pretty self-explanatory there. This is the actual floor sweep and it does have nylon bristles on it with a series of holes to jet the steam out. 
Uh, this one's a little bit different than the ones I've actually seen in the pictures online. The ones I've seen were more flat and wider and they had a pad that came with it that had like pockets stitched into it where you would wrap it on there somehow. This one actually has uh, clamps. If you see that's uh, opening up right there. It came with one terry cloth uh, towel to put on this like say if you're gonna do a floor so it's fairly simple hope I'm in the camera here clip it on one side bring it around clip it on the other and there you go I didn't see any replacements for these but what they do sell at Harbor Freight I'm not sure what they sell them in but I bought these in a 12 pack these little microfiber towels I think this you know for using this it'll just be folded in half it's not quite as long but I am able to grab just a little bit of that towel stretch it around the other side and there you go so you can use them up you don't even have to clean them if you don't want uh, I believe these packs, I bought them on sale, 12 of them, for like $5.99. I think they're somewhere along the lines of, you know, $12 originally, but I think that's the way that will work. Plus, if you're using this one for any reason, which has bristles on it as well, you know, you get into corners somewhat, scrub around with it. You might even be able to uh, put this down here and bring your towel around it and either tape it or put a fairly strong rubber band around it and you'll have a, a padded surface there you can clean with. Uh, this does not have extraction on it, you know, no suction. So you will probably need to come back, you know, with a clean cloth and wipe up, you know, any residue or whatnot, dirt, et cetera, et cetera. So that's pretty much the rundown on everything that came with it. Just, you know, kind of an unboxing there. Um, I looked at some videos. I really didn't find much on this particular steamer and what I did find was uh, they were more like commercials, you know, where you'd see them spray down some ketchup and rub it around and then say, yeah, it's dry and then magically it's gone, you know. I didn't see any, anything or anybody using something like this with a real world problem, you know. So I'm going to try it on some things, you know, which I kind of bought it for, you know, brake dust on my cars, for my wheels. Um, I'm in, I'm in my shop here and you know I've got a a mop sink you know that is just nasty I mean nasty I, I you can't hardly cut it with like lacquer thinner it's so gross so you know from all the grease dirt paint whatever I'm gonna try it on that you know and it's not a setup job is what I'm getting at you know and I've got some staining in the car carpet you know that I'm gonna try that with it you know which is bona fide stains so I'm gonna go through this and set it up and see about you know how long it takes to to heat up maybe how long it works and just show it in action and give me my thoughts on it so let me get set up and get a little further and we'll see how this thing works okay well I've got it plugged in and filled up with water here I put 48 ounces of water in it out of this jug of distilled water. Uh, my wife picked that up for me so I don't know how much that was but it can't be more than a dollar so. Alright I'm gonna flick it on but I'm also going to kind of start a timer on my phone here just to kind of see how long it takes to actually get to a point where we can use it. Okay so, okay, so it looks like the red light is on there this indicator light so when it is heating, that light should be on and it should go off after it's warmed up. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the camera for a minute and kind of watch this and I'll tell you how long it took. Okay, the indicator light is off now. Let's see how long this took. It took about 10 minutes and 35 seconds, give or take a few. It said in the manual, depending on how much water you were using, it would take between 2 and 8 minutes to heat up. I don't know if that eight minute time will decrease in the future, but only time will tell. And of course if there's less water in it, it should heat up faster. 
Uh, I've not even touched the trigger yet, so I'm going to pick this thing up and see, you know, squeeze it and see what happens. Alright, here we go. Uh, just shot water. Let's see here. There it comes. A little bit of water. Well, that's kind of impressive. So let me get to the sink and we'll see what we can do. Okay, well here's a shot of that nasty sink I was telling you about. I've just got one of those nylon bristle pads on here, so I'm going to try a spot down here and see what happens. I'm going to do it, scrub it, and then come back with a rag and see what we get off. So here we go. That did make a marked improvement. That let me try something else here. I'm going to hit it with uh, some all-purpose simple green first. Maybe kind of help it out a little bit. And let's see what happens. Well, it's still got some stuff on it, but that's pretty impressive. I'm going to try a spot over here without using the steamer, just using Simple Green. Just to kind of make a comparison. Well, simple green definitely kind of starts cutting it off, but uh, it's a lot easier to use this steamer. And that was just one application. This thing really is nasty. So let me hit it again here just to see what we can do. Well, if you ask me, that's uh, quite a huge difference for a real-world problem. You know, it's not perfect. I mean, this sink is, I've had it for years, but, you know, if you ask me, that looks like a million bucks compared to what it was. Okay, here's a quick shot of the brush just after doing that little section that I showed, and it definitely started curling these nylon bristles over. Kind of like the people had said. You know, I was kind of really getting on it. I think I might... Uh, Put on a new one and lighten up my touch a little bit and not be quite so aggressive with the brush itself. Alright, well I've spent the last few minutes kind of playing around with my process on this. You know, like, like I said, this thing is just totally nasty. You know, if you're just doing cleaning, you know, to try to sanitize and stuff like that and things are already relatively clean, uh, you know, you'd probably get along a lot quicker. Uh, I've probably been at this maybe five or ten minutes here, but what I'm doing now is, you know, I first started just with the steam cleaner itself and that wasn't quite cutting it. It helped, but it wasn't quite getting it to my satisfaction. Uh, then I tried some simple green, doused it, you know, and on the second test I, I didn't even really let it sit and do anything. I just went right after it. And that of course made things better. Uh, but I switched over to Purple Power to try it and my simple green is cut 50-50. You know, it's not 100% concentrate. So 
uh, that gave me a little bit more power with the purple power I sprayed it on let it sit for a couple minutes and then came in with the brush and it definitely was helping uh, but what I'm finding and it's probably just the way this is if you don't go back and wipe the spot off relatively quickly that you're working on if, if you move a big area all that grime and grit and dirt is going to just attach itself back to the surface and you kind of have to go over it again so what I'm doing is, is I'm spraying it with a, uh, a purple power you know an all-purpose cleaner I'm coming in with the uh, the wand and scrubbing the area only using the tips Ow, that's hot sorry be careful these things get hot only using the tips not bearing much pressure and you know this thing in the last 10 minutes or so is really holding up pretty good this brush so maybe that's the solution to the complaint people have with them wearing out and then I'm using a just a uh, scotch pad and kind of going over it again to kind of help work it and that also kind of helps move it around and keep it moving and then wipe it off so you know you can kind of see how much better things are looking you know I've not done this area or down in here I kind of focused out here a little bit and then I just finished this one so I'm going to continue on and do the rest of this sink and then I'll you know show you the finished result I'm not really timing myself but I, if I had to guess it's probably going to take me about 20 minutes to get it done total alright well I've revised my process a little more I just kind of wanted to show you I've got a section here you know it's still real nasty as you can see um, I'm going to show you what I'm doing now, you know, because this is just so gross. You know, I've cleaned this sink many times over the years, you know, it'd take me a couple hours to get it looking pretty good, but I'm really impressed by the way this is actually helping the job go along. You know, the elbow time on it, it's, it's not nearly as bad and it doesn't wear you out. So I'm going to try to do this in, you know, two sections here to kind of show you a, a control. Like I said, I'm starting with a little of the purple power just going to try to come down about half of it and I was originally coming in with this pad I went with something a little bit more aggressive which was just some fine steel wool so I'm just going to do this part by hand and I'm really getting down on it and you can see that did take a lot of it off And that's doing it by hand. Rinse that off. You can see that did make a great difference. I'm going to leave this one just as it is. I'm going to do the other side the same way. You know, there's a lot of kind of slime and garbage on this. So I'm just doing a quick preliminary cleaning here. And on this side, I'm going to kind of get a little aggressive with it too, just to kind of get it off. This purple power is kind of a product I had that I hadn't used all that much, and I'm kind of impressed with it. Okay, well these areas here, this is actually like rusted steel that's kind of embedded itself, so you'll just have to kind of ignore that, so... I'm going to go ahead and hit it now with a little bit more of this purple power. And I hope this picks up on the camera. Now I'm going to come in with a steam. it with this steel wool again and that steam I don't know if you'll be able to see it but it really did help lift some things off that I could not get off before so let me rinse this you know and I'm not sure if you can see a difference it's kind of hard to see on the camera I can't really see myself but I can tell you there is Let's just take this right here for example. I'm going to go ahead and just spray it with a little of this. And this is a part that I already did that I haven't gone back with this method. So I'm going to hit it here. I'm 
come back with the fine pad. I need to clean this out, obviously. And I'm not sure if you saw the difference there. I do. Now you have to keep in mind a lot of this stuff down here that, that looks dirty. It's really not. These are scratches all over this plastic sink where the dirt is down in it and the grime is down in it and I just can't get that out. So this is the process I'm using. Uh, so far, you know, it's a, certainly a heck of a lot easier than it was, but it's no miracle cure. You know, this one is requiring chemicals and some elbow grease, but it is a big benefit to use this steam, I can tell you already. All right, well, I'm pretty much finished with the basin of the sink. I'm going to uh, work on these nasties up here. You know, this stuff is, you know, you can see it kind of wipes off anyway, but it is clearly nasty. So I'm just going to hit this with a straight brush and see what happens. A lot of stuff to try to wipe off, you know, wet rag may be beneficial, but I'm not sure what this is here. It's really thick. Let me try a little of this on it. I'm gonna let that sit for a minute and spray this side. You know, this is not real fun to watch, but you know, like I said, I wanted to show real world potential cleaning solutions and you know, what you might expect to get out of this thing. So I'm just gonna shoot it this way. If this is not for you, just tune out. Okay, I'm going to hit this with side again. Okay, I'm going to go in here with this little piece of steel wool and try to get down in these little nooks and crannies that I can't really get that brush into. pretty impressed with that quick and easy. I'll go ahead and hit the other side since we've got it. You know, I keep soap up here, things of that nature. That's probably what a lot of that was, was kind of built up soap scum with, you know, dirt and whatever in it. Just give it a quick wipe there. Maybe one shot more with this. One more of these. behind it but that was pretty easy as you can see and it started uh, cleaning up this fixture real nice on its own without any extra chemicals so 
let me finish wrapping this up and make sure I get all the garbage off of it and I'll show the finished product. Alright, well here's a quick shot of the rag I was using to wipe that down. You can see how nasty it is. That kind of gives you an idea on how dirty this thing really was. And I only used this rag for about a third of this sink. So, I pretty much got it cleaned up now. It was easy to do, but it did require some elbow grease, some chemicals, and the right formula, you know, and I used exactly what the last procedure was I said, you know, and you can see now that, you know, this is really respectable. Like I said, all these darker areas down in here, that's where there's cuts and scratches and whatnot, and, you know, this isn't a kitchen sink. This is a sink for a shop, you know, and I didn't really have any intentions on cleaning this anyway, but... I figured this would be a pretty good testimonial to, you know, whether or not that steamer works. And so far, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with it. I'm going to try to uh, come up with some other things to clean and show you, just to kind of, so you can get a, an idea on this thing, what it might do. Okay, well here's a quick shot after, you know, doing that entire sink with one of these brushes. It does have a little deformation. I got a little careless here and there, but... You know, it, it did hold up a lot better than the first one where I was just totally getting on it. I don't know the source for these. I don't know where you can pick them up to replace them. You know, you'll have to try to look online, maybe find them. But that seemed to uh, definitely prolong the wearing out of the brushes by having just a little bit of a lighter touch. All right, well, I'm going to show another real-world problem. This is a carousel out of a microwave a glass of some kind. I'm going to go ahead and try the green scrub pad on this, the scouring pad, and just see what happens here. You know, it's not wet or anything, so let's see what happens. Here we go. Worked pretty good. Let's this thing off. Yeah, I'm satisfied with that. The stuff you see in here is actually on the bottom. I'll clean that in a minute. And scouring pad. Hmm. It seems to be holding up okay, but I'm kind of flattened out some. Go ahead and hit the back here. Clean that up real nice. Uh, that's more than likely kind of what you would have in the house or something like that, rather than that, you know, sink that I have. Uh, but I'm satisfied with that. That should be, you know, it's nice and warm right now. Should help sanitize it uh, too. I'm gonna try to find something else. I'm gonna give it a shot on these wheels here and see, you know, how well it does with this brake dust. And I'm just gonna try the brush. I may not be able to get in there everywhere with it, but I may get a little shaky here. I'm just gonna do this with one hand, so here we go. Definitely did help. Let me try to get back here in this spot. It's 
kind of hard to get in some of the nooks and crannies. But that looks pretty darn good. I'm going to try it without the, the tip on it just to see what we get. If I can get it off here with one hand. Let's try the one next to it. Kind of a combination of both that's kind of required here. Let's try this brush again. See if I can get back in this corner. Small places like this, it's kind of hard to get it into, but you know, it does work. And I, this is one of those things that might require, you know, chemical treatment as well. And, you know, there's products to clean these wheels, but I don't have any yet, so I'll get some and try this on my own later. But all in all, that was not a bad uh, difference there. They look pretty good. Let's try something else. Okay, well, here's another problem. Uh, hopefully this shows up on the camera. You can see where you notice things of sodas or whatever have spilt down here in my truck. I'm going to do a couple spots here and try it in different manners. I'm going to try it back here uh, with just the wand itself, no nothing on it. Then I'm going to try a spot with Fantastic, which I've always used on carpets. It seems to work pretty well, and there's other products you can use. But that's what I have on hand. Okay, so let me go ahead and get to work here and see what we can do. See everything I got off right there just in that one little section. Uh, it may be hard to tell, but it, it certainly does look better. So I'm going to try a spot over here. Get this thing turned on. You know, I would typically let this soak for a little bit, but I'm not going to. So here we go. I'm going to come in with a stiff brush here. Okay, hopefully you can see everything I got off there. Like I said, these are real world problems. You know, this is pretty, pretty nasty. Like I said, you know, this doesn't have extraction, so I'll come back in here with a shot back and try to pull as much moisture out as I can, but... Hopefully you can tell on the camera that that looks quite nice. I'm satisfied with that. Okay, I wanted to get a close-up shot of this carpet. It was kind of hard to see on the video when I reviewed it. 
the, because of the way the pile uh, is, you know, it, you can see it changes colors, but hopefully you can see how well this looks now as compared to what it did. You know, it was more all like this back here. Hopefully that even shows up, how dirty it is. Uh, got down into the crack nicely. Yeah, I did vacuum it out with my shop back, you know, to get a lot of the moisture up. It's still damp. But I'm completely satisfied with that, and it wasn't too hard to do. Uh, while I was here, I figured I'd go ahead and maybe try a little spot in this door jam. You know, there's a lot that's hard to get into in these spaces. It's almost hard to get this in there on this vehicle. I'm going to try it anyway. Hopefully you can see how well that cleaned up right there. A lot of what you're seeing is a reflection, it's not dirt. That worked well. Let me go ahead and try a spot here where something has evidently leaked down. Just hit that on this real quick. Got a little spot lingering right here. Wow, that shined up, cleaned up pretty nice. Okay, well I'm going to wrap up my thoughts on this. Uh, I apologize that the video is so long, but like I said, I wanted to show this thing in action, uh, unlike a lot of the videos I've seen. And I am honestly, for the most part, completely satisfied with it. Uh, I've run an entire 48 ounces through it uh, into today, and then filled it up again, and I've probably done half of the container, if I had to guess. Uh, the unit itself seems to work great. I can't really complain about it. Uh, the brushes and whatnot, these perishable parts, you know, this one has been used for uh, the carpets, the sink, uh, all door jams and creases and crevices on a, a car I'm detailing. And they do, you know, bend over and wear out. Uh, but you know, I kind of consider these to be consumable items anyway. Uh, if, if you can find a source for these, uh, I would definitely go with it. Now I have not used the, the floor sweep and the triangular attachment or the squeegee, but they seem to be just what they are. You know, I don't think there'd be a big problem with those at all. Uh, read the manual on this if you get one because there are some safety aspects because this is a pressurized system here uh, you know you can't if you run out of water you can't just open it up and immediately you know put new water in. you let need to let it cool down for a while and then fill it up again uh, the case itself seems to get warm uh, but no you know no big deal there and then of course you know if you refill it with water you'll just start over from that point but even when it is cooled off Press your trigger here to release all the pressure out of this before you take the cap off because you know if you don't that's pressurized you may take that off and get a get a big surprise so all in all I'm satisfied with it uh, I wouldn't hesitate to go with one for you know light duty cleaning I've done some heavier duty stuff with it it seems to work great thanks for watching and good luck